Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north. More specifically, we are in Austin, Minnesota, and even more. Specifically than that, we are in front of the Spam Museum. A museum dedicated to the delicious canned meat that uh, has been served in America for decades and decades. I am personally a fan of Spam. I like, I, I love it, you know, grilled and either served with eggs or even on a sandwich. Sometimes even buy like the Spam singles at the uh, grocery store as I'm traveling and eat those in the car. Now my, my ex-wife actually banned me from eating Spam in the house. She said she did not like the way it, it, it cooked or the way it smelled when it was cooking. So unfortunately I had to go uh, two decades not eating as much Spam as, uh, as I would have liked. But now, now I can eat as much Spam as I want and I can visit the Spam Museum as many times as I would like. So please, follow me. And here we are at the Spam Museum, a celebration of canned meat. Of course, we were just at the uh, Green Giant Museum here in Minnesota, a celebration of canned vegetables. So yeah, here in Minnesota, they celebrate their canned foods. And we're here at the Spam Museum to celebrate the delicious canned treat. See the pig farmer here, getting these hogs nice and fed. You can see there, he's uh, got a bucket of corn, a bucket of corn that he's feeding these hogs, fattening them up so he could put them in a can as little bricks of Spam. And as we enter the Spam Museum here, be quite impressive at this kiosk in the middle. You look up there, you can see little cans of Spam as they move their way through the museum. And you can see this pillar right here is actually made of cans of Spam. And you know, you know, when I think of Spam, I always think of like, yeah, the traditional can of Spam right there. But there is all sorts of different varieties of Spam here. Tokino, I don't even, I do not know what Tokino is. If anyone knows what Tokino is, leave a comment in the comment section. Maple flavored, that's a little off-putting to me, but that's just me. Spam light, it's less fat, less sodium, less calories. And here's a Spam bacon hybrid. Let's play a Spam game here. Let's play, welcome to the Spam brand exam. All right, as a Spam fan, I'm being, uh, being put to the test here. How old was George A. Hormel when he worked for his uncle's meat packing company? I'm gonna say he probably started out pretty young, maybe 14? Right. Next question. What is George's oldest sister's name? Okay, I have no idea. This is getting very hard all of a sudden. Uh, Anna. Oh, I was wrong. What year did they, did they create Spam? I'm gonna say all the way back in 1930. Oh, wrong, answer, 1937. I need to turn in my uh, spam, uh, spam fan card. It says, what popular Spam dish originated in Hawaii? I know this, Spam Masubi. That's like a, almost like a sushi roll. It's like a piece of rice wrapped in seaweed with Spam on it. I think I'm right. Winner, winner, Spam brand dinner. What was the names of the couple from the UK that were married at the Spam Museum in 2017. I'm thinking maybe this exam is maybe for when you're done with the museum, not when you're just getting started, but let's say it was uh, Bob and Jane. Good old Bob and Jane. Sorry, it was Mark and Ann. Talks about different recipes here. Restaurant inspired, Asian, Hawaiian. I actually know that Spam is actually a big part of Hawaiian cuisine because of the military base there at Pearl Harbor. They would ship in uh, the canned Spam for the U.S. soldiers. Let's see uh, if we can find any interesting Spam recipes here. Yeah, let's see, Musubi. Yeah, it's like a Spam sushi there. There's Spam Musubi pizza, Musubi burrito, 
Oh my gosh, that is, uh, I didn't know there were so many things you could do with Masubi. Let's see what uh, restaurant inspired spam dishes. Spam tacos? Spam corn dogs? Oh my gosh. S mini spam apple arepas? Man, I don't know, you could have like an entire spam based restaurant with all these uh, different uh, spam dishes. Spam pizza rolls? What? Here is like an, a roll of information. It says people in the US consume 97,761,600 cans of spam every year. That many cans of spam every day? And 186 cans of spam every minute. So spam was founded in 1937, the same year that the first issue of Detective Comics, it actually stands for DC Comics, like, you know, like Superman, and actually DC Comics is redundant because the C stands for comics, so it's Detective Comics Comics. Also, The Hobbit. The Hobbit came out the same year as Spam, as well as the Golden Gate Bridge. Some old advertisements here, what can I cook? without much fuss. Spam bake. Lunch is ready on the dot, cold or hot, spam hits the spot. Here's Tom Hormel, part of the Hormel family which created spam. Uh, he did not, however, he did not follow in the family footsteps. Instead of going into the canned meat industry, he became an artist and here's some of his Artwork. I would say spam inspired artwork, but I don't know how much, what, what role spam played in the creation of these two paintings. I'm sure there's more to his life than just spam. I do love that no matter where you go in the museum, you can see that conveyor belt of spam going by. Here is the spam history section. The Hormel Company. Hormel makes other types of, uh, of canned meats. You can learn a little bit about where Spam comes from. Replica of the original Hormel meat market here. Some delicious meats, ham, sausages hanging in the window. It says that uh, the company largely built its success on making sausage. Also, uh, Advertises having very clean meat. Of course, who wants a bunch of dirty pork chops? It said they called themselves Dairy Brand. You know, Hormel's Dairy Brand Bacon. It's because this is like, apparently this is a dairy farm area. This is the hogs were fed on sweet country milk and grain. So, drawer here. Oh, with some authentic uh, Hormel labels there. Fresh calf livers. Here is George Hormel in his office, handing off his business to his son, Jay Hormel. It's in 1927 that uh, Hormel began canning meat, which they uh, are synonymous with today. Oh, here's some old canned hams. I wonder if there's still a delicious ham inside. And I wonder if you crack these open, if that ham would still be edible. I would definitely like to taste uh, some uh, hundred year old ham. I think that'd be pretty amazing. Or maybe a lovely sealed whole chicken in, oh yeah, that's preserved in gelatin. Talks here about the Dinty Moore brand, which I believe still exists. I remember eating uh, Dinty Moore beef stew when I was very, back when I was very broke, I'll be honest. Back when I was broke, I ate a lot of Dinty Moore beef stew. What I did not know was that apparently Dinty Moore was a comic book character that they uh, licensed out in order to sell uh, beef stew. 1935, they came out with Hormel Chili, or uh, Chili Con Carne. It was, uh, you know, previously a uh, food in Latin countries, as it kind of introduced it to uh, the American palate. And a fun fact, interesting thing, is that apparently Hormel Chili 
was uh, Walt Disney's favorite food. And then shortly after, in 1937, we see the emergence of Spam, which is the uh, the trademark the trademark food of uh, the Hormel Company. You notice this is not the Hormel Museum. This is the Spam Museum. Spam is the superstar here. And look at that. Now, I said earlier I thought it was uh, shoulder ham that made Spam. You can see there right on the label. Or is it was called Hormel Spiced Ham. So Spam stands for spiced ham. Spam, the meat of many uses. Apparently it's original uh, tagline there. This Spam here in 1941 says, this is a special economy label for period of emergency. So emergency Spam there. Also you can see there how the can originally opened in the 1950s, how it like sliced open there in the middle before they developed the uh, the pop top that uh, we're more used to. Yeah, it looks like the pop top didn't come until 1987. You can see in the 1982, they still had the tab on the back where you tore the can in half. Seems like that'd be a good way to cut yourself. I don't know, but just what comes to my mind. You can see the more modern spam can there. And some special editions, the Spam Burger can, and the 70th, 70th anniversary of Spam can. And this section talks about Spam's contribution to the U.S. military. Said that uh, the Spam factory became a wartime uh, factory during World War II. They produced mass amounts of Spam in order to feed the uh, soldiers. You can see here even the... Uh, the base here was called Spamville. Yeah, you can see the Jeep there. You can see here, even painted a pig on the nose of one of the planes, named it Slammin' Spammy. So you can see how the uh, Spam Company fueled the US in their battle against the Axis. Spam lends a hand. So it talks about how it actually ships Spam to the United States allies, such as the UK and Russia during World War II. It says uh, right here, without Spam, said Khrushchev, we wouldn't have been able to feed our army. So the, the, the leader of Russia, Khrushchev, said that uh, Spam was responsible for feeding their army. And of course, if you know anything about World War II, you know that it was largely the Russian army that was able to defeat the Germans. So therefore, if they couldn't have fed the army without Spam, they would have lost to the Germans, and therefore Nazis would have won the war, and Nazis would be in control to this day. So in a way, we have to thank Spam for the fact that uh, we're not under Nazi control currently. Here we can lend a hand, hoist this crate of Spam family products, get a feel for the job of feeding our allies. Let's see, pulling on the rope here. Okay, I'm not gonna be able to do this. Oh, there we go, now with one hand. There, ah, there we go. The overseas shipment of Spam, oh my gosh. In this section, we can take a look at Spam around the world. Celebrate the Spam brand around the world. We'll see how different people in different countries enjoy Spam. We enter here through Australia, and I can tell it's Australia because there's a bunch of boomerangs in the air. There's a watch out for kangaroos sign standing above a pile of didgeridoos. And over here at the Spam Shack, you can get your picture taken with uh, this delightful little Spam character here hanging out in front of those surfboards. Spam also apparently popular in Japan. I guess the uh, post-war military presence kind of uh, 
spread the love of spam. It's like spam travels the world with uh, with the United States military. I guess a staple of the military. Oh, look at this uh, Japanese commercial here. Oh, look at that. The dancing spam character there. Right now, easy to cook, S-P-A-M. Everyone in the family can rely on you. Always smiling no matter who it is. Go get some. Right now, easy to cook. So what recipes do you think we can cook? This commercial's amazing. You can see the little spam character there that we saw in the video as he travels around Japan. Oh, there he is at Mount Fuji and in downtown Tokyo. Next to this bonsai tree, we have some of the Japanese spam delicacies. You can see that uh, spam style sushi, very popular. Well, that looks good. It's like avocado toast with spam. With some eggs on there, a little bit of spam with uh, asparagus. That looks yummy. But this looks, oh yeah, that looks amazing there. You can see a little spam dressed up like little pigs in bed. Oh uh, yeah, some, some sort of Japanese food is so beautiful. Hey, do you like a spam bowl? Oh, yes, let's see, what do we got here? We got hickory sunk and hot and spicy. All right, hickory smoked or hot and spicy. I'll try the hot and spicy. Of course, go ahead. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. All right, I'm surprised by some spamples. Got some hot and spicy spam here. Mmm, warm. You can taste like the peppers from the hot sauce. Ooh, it's got quite a bit of heat to it. Ooh, really yummy. That's when spam's its best when it's got like kind of like crispy outside. Mm, kind of like you know, kind of it's like kind of a cross between ham and bacon, but yeah, I got a nice, nice spicy flavor to it. That was so good. We have this little British pub here, the Flying Pig. It's a little spam sign on the outside. I guess we can go in and find out how the British view spam. Apparently the British love spam quite a bit. As was mentioned in the quiz we took earlier, they had a spammy wedding here at the Spam Museum in 2017. Mark Benson was a spam super fan uh, from the UK who legally changed his middle name to reflect his love for the brand. So this guy, uh, his uh, hyperfixation was spam. And when I heard the, uh, the tour guy talking, he said that he had tried several times to allow them to have their wedding here at the Spam Museum, but uh, he, was, he was denied. They, they didn't want to do the wedding. But apparently when he informed them that he had legally changed his middle name to I Love Spam, that sealed the deal and a wedding was born with the happy couple. I wonder if they had spam at their wedding reception. So some British spam treats. Pickled eggs, toad in the hole, and spam fritters with mushy peas. And uh, what's this? The Spamalot game. Of course, Spamalot I think is the, the name of the Monty Python musical. Let's see. Oh, this is like this is like Angry Birds, but you got to fling a fork here. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. Fling the fork at the tower. I'll take out all the cans of Spam. Well, that's a lot of fun. I, I played Angry Birds obsessively back in the day. All right, looks like we had two cans of Spam left. Oh, we, we fling different items. Now we're flinging a knife. Maybe not so much. There we go. Oh no! That was that was weak. I admit that was weak. Next a spoon. There we go. Oh! Alright. I, I really gotta really gotta pull back. There's a glass there. I'm gonna wing this glass. Oh, I'm gonna wing this glass. There we go, we took out all the spam. Oh, and there's spam with wings. 
All right, let's check out how Spam is celebrated in the Philippines. Do we got another, another game here? Let's see. Customize your own Spam Jeepney. What's a Jeepney? Is that a Jeepney? A jeepney. I, I want to move in a Jeepney. That looks pretty cool. Let's see. Oh, okay, we got to customize it. So, what we got to, what's this? Okay, we got to add a horn. All right, there is my spamtastic work. That is my jeepney. Put some, put some spam cans on there in the front. I've got a lot of luggage. Here is Latin America here. Some of the Latin American spam dishes. See the spam pavo there. Oh, with some spam spread. I don't think I've ever had spam spread before. That would be good. You put that on a little sandwich. It'd be delicious. South Korea over here. It's said that uh, spam gift boxes are popular during uh, to give to people for New Year's and Thanksgiving. So this absolute enormous box of spam here featured with two bottles of olive oil. See a box of Spam spicy sausage stew there. And over here on the stove, you can actually see some simulated Spam sizzling. So China section, a little panda or Spamda, if you will. Let's see some of the Chinese Spam cans here. It's interesting that different Spam in different country has different pictures of you know different variations you know different local dishes made out of spam and then hawaii the spam capital of the world oh look at that spam sold with the shaka symbol on the can there with the uh the two hawaiian hula dolls there Oh yeah, some delicious spam dishes. A couple of ukuleles, a pineapple. So here we enter the spam factory, and you can see above our heads that conveyor belt of spam circling in a big loop above our heads. And this explains how spam is made. Now, um, I heard before, I always heard it was the shoulder of the pig, I always heard that spam was the word shoulder and ham combined. But I think that I think that may be inaccurate. I think that may just be something that people repeat. But they do use the shoulder and they use the rear, which is, uh, it says ham is the cut of pork from the pig's rear. So you use those two cuts of pork. You uh, add some salt, some water, potato starch. I actually wondered, um, I did see that, that Spam actually has more carbs in it than a lot of meat, and I guess that's because they add the starch from potatoes to help keep the moisture inside. And then just a dash of sugar and a sprinkling of sodium nitrate. So here is the, uh, the setup here for canning Spam. Of course, we have to uh, put on the appropriate gear. Need a Spam hard hat and a lab coat. Okay, so here's our workstation. After we hit start, gotta grab a can and fill it. So there's a can of Spam there, or an empty can, Spam can. A little bean bag hunk of Spam. You gotta put a lid on it, and then put it in the oven here. That starts the oven. And we gotta attach the label, and then put it in the box there. Okay, so you're gonna hit the button, got the can, Gonna put the spam in the can, put the lid on the spam here, and then put the label. That's the hardest part. The label. The label here. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm, I'm getting stuck up on the label. There we go. Okay, so then we put that in the oven. Actually, I think we were supposed to. I think we're technically we're supposed to put the label on after the oven, but 
Don't tell anyone. Start the oven. All right, cook that spam. Oven done. And then uh, put that in there. And then, okay, so can spam lid oven. Oven done. I'm gonna put the label on. All right, this, this is hard. All right, so I successfully boxed three cans of Spam. We're gonna stop it. And uh, in the time it took me to make three cans of Spam, in a minute and 56 seconds, the Austin, Minnesota Spam plant produced 812 cans of Spam. Here's cracking the can code. Shows you can actually look at the bottom of a can of Spam. You can get all the information you need. It says A means that it was canned in Austin. F, it was canned in Fremont. That's the date when it was canned. Uh, there's the military time on which it was canned. And the uh, USDA plant code there. Also, which variety of Spam it is. So yeah, you get all that information just reading the bottom of these Spam cans. Here's a question I've been wondering the answer to for a long time. How many spam cans tall am I? Let's see here. To the line up there. See, there's 20 cans of spam right there. 21, 22. I'm saying I'm about 22 cans of spam tall. And look at this. This is a bacon fueled motorcycle here black label bacon made by hormel it's a promotion where it could only run on bacon i guess bacon grease in there yeah, driven by bacon that's pretty that's pretty amazing right there i guess they got it out to show everyone they're putting it back there in the uh window area now we saw earlier the, uh, the living can of spam character, which is a lot of fun, but this is their mascot that they uh, introduced in 2012. This is, I guess, their official mascot, Sir Canalot. I guess it's fitting because you know Knight's armor is kind of like a can for human meat, your body, and uh, spam. There is a can around the uh, spiced meat that uh, makes up spam. So it kind of all fits. Over here at Monty Python's Cafe, they talk about the pop culture significance of Spam. Here is playing the, uh, the infamous Monty Python Spam sketch where a uh, waitress in a diner insisted that every item on the menu was some form of spam or contained spam and uh, it says that this this uh this sketch led to the term spam being used as a way to to uh describe unwanted uh unwanted emails saying that uh because they kept repeating the word spam 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 in that sketch that that is where the uh the idea to start calling it spam came from. I don't know, I, I, I wonder, you know, I wonder if this would be a sensitive subject here in the Spam Museum, that uh, spam can be used to describe something that is excessive and unwanted, but you know, it, it just kinda, it, it's very judicious, explains where that, uh, where that uh, description came from. They were saying it links back to the Monty Python sketch. And then uh, Spamalot, also the name of the Monty Python stage show that was based on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I've not seen the stage show, but I remember my dad showing me uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail once upon a time, and I was absolutely obsessed with the movie the first time I saw it. I thought it was the most amazing thing I had ever seen. Some fun with Spam here. See a Spam dress a spam flag, and then a device used for launching cans of spam. 
And up here we have the Funko Pop of the Spam Can. It's got a little key there, which he's gonna crack himself open. Here are some musical instruments made from Spam Cans. I guess they call them Spam Canstruments. There's a washboard there, a Spam guitar. This is a little Spam ukulele here. And uh, I guess this is what I would call a spam joe. A spam joe, a banjo that is assisted by the attachment of spam cans. I think this might be some sort of spam, like, yeah, like one stringed bass, maybe. What they call it the one string thing from the uh, Country Bear Jamboree. Some highly sought after limited edition runs of spam. This is Golden Honey Grail, themed after. Spam a lot, the Monty Python Spam a lot. Also, stinky French garlic spab, also based on Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Here is uh, pumpkin spice spam. This set is sold completely out in seven hours. So I guess we're probably not going to get any in the gift shop here. I would love to try that. I did hear one of the tour guides saying that it was the worst flavor of spam he had ever tasted. So that is for the, the fall season. And then for the winter season, you move on to figgy pudding. Figgy pudding spam. Bring us our figgy pudding. And I believe it is time to exit through the spam shop. Yeah, pretty wonderful selection of t-shirts here. I have this t-shirt somewhere. I bought this last time I was here. I think it was like five years ago and as Paul Bunyan carrying all these cans of spam I really need to dig this shirt out I know I still have it somewhere but uh, yeah it's a lot of great stuff just the iconic word spam there there's a Minnesota shaped like spam the spam cookbook there and just lots and lots of spam merchandise the I love spam button the I love spam bumper sticker again trying to I want to get some bumper stickers trying to go easy on it because if I, if I buy them all right now, then my car will be completely filled in no time. And of course, you can buy cans of Spam here at the uh, Spam Museum. Here's the to Tokino. I was curious about what that tasted like. And uh, yeah, hickory smoke flavor. The maple, the maple just sounds a little sketchy to me, but... That's just me. And this is the one I tasted here. The, the spample I was given is the hot and spicy, which was actually really tasty. I really like that. They have the spam singles here. I buy these sometimes. Some Walmarts have them, some don't. As I travel, I keep them in my car as a, as a protein to have. Uh, I really do enjoy these. Yeah, just look at the conveyor belt again coming through the uh, gift shop. Spam drinking glasses. Spam Yahtzee. That's interesting. In this case here, we've got Spam jewelry, some Spam earrings there. They do look like they have a Spam snow globe, but it's behind glass, so people like me can't shake it. There's a Spam air freshener. Fills your car with Spammy goodness. And this, actually, I, might, I think I'm going to buy one of these. This is a like a, a silverware kit. I think this would be perfect for my car so I don't have to keep using uh, disposable silverware. Some Spam chapstick. Oh, look at that little, there's a little, a little uh, panda and a can of Spam there. Spam macadamia nuts? That's just kind of confusing. All sorts of Spam sports gear, basketballs, footballs. Hockey puck there. Some flip flops or spam dolls, if you will. And 2024 is the year of the penny press here on the Carpetbagger channel and here at the Spam Museum. They have some wonderful selections for pressed penny. I think I'm going to get a couple, a couple of these made. You can see they have uh, Sir, uh, Sir, is it Sir Canalot there? All right.
right, so we got Sir Canalot there. We've got the Spam Museum logo. And this is like a pig in a boxcar derby car. Okay, now this is a little puzzling. It's exited the Spam Museum. I was walking down the street over here, and you see the door here. Above it, it says Arnold Ziffel Museum. Not open to the public. Now, Arnold Ziffel was the, uh, the pig from Green Acres. The, uh, the, um, the, 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 the old sitcom about uh, living on a farm. The pig was named Arnold Ziffel. And it says not open to the public, so I don't know what's behind that door. I have no clue. I don't know if this is possibly a joke because the Spam Museum is right there. I may just be a little, little haha, -ha, but um, yeah, I'm confused. I'd love, I'd love if anyone has any intel on this one. Now this may seem obvious, but going to the Spam Museum, it made me hungry. <laughs> I wanted some Spam, so I asked if there was any local restaurants that maybe served any sort of Spam specialty dishes, and uh, the ladies at the gift shop directed me down this way. So that I could find some fine Spam dishes here at B&J's Bar and Grill. So over here on the wall, it does say they have some, they have a separate Spam menu. There's Spam sliders, Spam quesadillas, grilled Spam and cheese, Spam melt, and Spam sandwich. All right, I have settled on the Spam melt. So you got some Spam with bacon and cheese, Spam and bacon together. And um, I just got some cottage cheese as a side because I saw they had it. It sounded good. Let's give this Spam melt a try. That's a pretty thick cut, pretty thick cut piece of Spam there. Very good. Cheese and bacon. Spam, I don't know. I feel like Spam gets a bad rap. I think it's legitimately delicious. The Spam and bacon together, it's a lot of pork, but pork goes well with pork. We'll wash it all down with a little cottage cheese. Once again, I've attained membership into the Clean Plate Club. Okay, I admit, I didn't eat my crust, but I ate most of it. So a delicious, <clears throat> so a delicious, so a delicious Spam dinner here at B&J's Grill, and a wonderful visit to the Spam Museum. And like I said, I am a legitimate Spam fan, so it was uh, always exciting to come out here to Austin, Minnesota to check out the Spam Museum. But now, walking back to my car in the frigid cold here, and uh, going to drive east, still heading eastward, and uh, some more adventures in the upcoming days. Uh, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun random stuff. If you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more, get you a postcard once a month, also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and looking at possibly expanding the Etsy shop to sell more items you leave a comment letting me know what you guys would like to see in the Etsy shop coming up also doing personalized messages on cameo currently and of course all those things help keep this train on the track this boat in the water and this dirigible in the air till next time my friends this one's in the bag